understand. One more minute. Okay, Julian will be joining. Good, good. Julian. Julian. Hello. Yeah. So sorry, I had because uh, I don't use Zoom, so I had some uh, some difficulties to to oh, join. Boy. Sorry about that. Awesome. All right. So uh, I just need one more second to figure out the live stream. Um, and then we will go live. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, I know uh, we have people from all over the world. Um, morning afternoon, night, whatever it is. All right, Andrew, uh, if you just wanna check, it looks like we're live on YouTube. Um, so if you could just double check that and then I will double check on Twitter. You're on Periscope. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. And it's been five minutes, so we'll, we'll get started shortly. Wow, 59 people have showed up. That's a really great turnout. I think we had, um, 120 people register. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, unless there are any final hiccups, I think we'll, we'll get started. Awesome. I didn't hear any protests, so we're going to get going. So everybody, thank you so much for uh, joining this Hack Money Brainstorm. If you didn't know, this is uh, an event specifically linked to Hack Money, which is Heath Global's very first online DeFi hackathon. Now, if you don't know who ETH Global is, um, we're an organization that does events around the world. and in the past, they've always been in-person physical events. Um, we will uh, get a bunch of sponsors, get hackers to come for a weekend uh, and build awesome things. Uh, but again, like I said, this is our first virtual event and we're super excited. So um, what we're gonna do today is just, uh, we have three awesome guests. We've got Scott Lewis from DexAg D5 Pulse. We have Julian uh, Bouton. Tell me how to pronounce it. Julian? Did you fall out? We have Julian from State Capital and Tina Shen from a bunch of projects. You can say which one you'd, um, whichever one you'd like to uh, be associated with. Are you guys muted? I can't tell. with 
give me one moment. Tina. We want to make sure our speakers can actually. Yeah, I'm, I think we're here, maybe. All right, Tina had her hand raised. Um, yeah. Apologies. No. There we go, Tina. Hey, guys. Julian. Cool, yep. Yeah. OK, cool. Sorry about that. That's so okay. yeah, like I said, Hack Money starts this Friday, and this event is, is part of Part of that getting people in the, the hacking mode the DeFi money mode um, and we're super excited to have all of these people who've joined us um, so if i left anything out um, i just want to give a quick minute for the speakers to introduce themselves and talk about what they're working on um, scott if you want to start us off um yeah i'm scott uh the, we're working on DeFi pulse um and uh, Dexag, Dex.ag, uh, which is a Dexag reader, and uh, F gas station. Awesome. Tina? Um, I'm working on um, my um, one of my uh, previous hack uh, it's global hackathon winning project. Um, it was called Hash Edge uh, from East Singapore. And um, yeah, and I'm working on it through a flash organization method, um, like a prolong hackathon uh, with project milestone driven goals. Yeah. Julian? Yeah, um, so I'm Julian. Uh, I'm working with, um, I'm uh, behind a stake capital and a stake DAO. So we do um, staking as a service, liquidity provider, market maker, and, and uh, arbitrage. Awesome. So I figured before we dive in, now that we have everybody's background and which products they're working on, um, just a couple like intro questions to get people thinking about it. Um, what would you say is your favorite under the radar DeFi project? Um, we know all of you guys are really uh, in tune with the ecosystem. Um, what would you say if you, if you had to pick one, what's like a newer project that not many, not many people would know about? I really like real tea, real tea. Um, which is tokenizing real estate. Um, the market they're in, they can't really be fully decentralized, tokenizing uh, US real estate, but kind of bridging the chasm between real world assets and like Ethereum on chain assets is I think pretty important to the future of DeFi and they're doing it. Yeah. Mm, I really like um, uh, MacDex.io. It's um, a new perp swap um, on, um, it just rolled out its new perp, perp swap on uh, ETH DAI pair. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually utilizes uh, AMM um, and uh, in combination of an order book um, to set the price. It's purely on chain by speed. So I thought it was a very clever design. Is that the one that's spelled MC Dex? Oh yeah, yeah, MC okay. Dex. <laughs> okay, but it's pronounced Mick Dex, like McDonald's. Like, yeah, kind okay. of. I, I just yeah. call it that. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Um, yeah. Well, I like I like uh, Balancer. Uh, if we stay on a on a DeFi, uh, more like DeFi economic space, uh, I like Balancer because it's. Um, uh, it's it's a mix between um, Uniswap and and set set protocol. So it's uh, it, it's a you, you got auto market maker attached to uh, to the uh, to the system, and you also have auto balancing across different assets. Uh, so I think it's very interesting. All the project like uh, Curve uh, Curve Finance as well, but it's probably not very under the at the moment. Um, yeah, and also it, all the different projects that are trying to integrate uh, uh, BTC. Um, uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, like TBTC, I think this will be a massive, uh, massive opportunity for the uh, for the Ethereum space uh, to bring liquidity from uh, from Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin market. So, I like all the different projects that are uh, building um, that are tokenizing Bitcoin into Ethereum network. Yeah, and it, it seems like there's a new one almost every day. Uh, 
some tokenized version. So it'll, it'll be very interesting to see the trade-offs that each of them makes or, or the different design decisions. Um, yes, yeah. there's certainly yeah, right. certainly a really wide design space that people can uh, attack them. Not attacking in the negative sense. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then one more, maybe one more icebreaker. Uh, what is, if you're comfortable sharing, I'll go first. Um, what is the largest amount or the silliest way you've messed up sending money on, on uh, Ethereum? I remember I've sent, I've tried to send ETH between mainnet and um, test nets before. And I'm pretty sure I, that that ETH is gone forever. I sent it to an improper contract. Do you, have you, I'm, I'm sure everybody's lost money in some way, but I'm just curious uh, if you're comfortable sharing. I think it just reminded me of one. I did that too. <laughs> yeah, sending between test nets. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I don't want to dox my. Yeah, no, don't don't mine's dox like yourself. Really, mine's like really silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh but but I, I it might be unique enough that I might dox one of my addresses. Um basically just having to do something at a later time and then forgetting to do that thing. Yeah. And losing all the monies. Um but it wasn't that much money, which was lucky. But it made up for the low amount of money it was with the sheer stupidity it took to lose money that way. Um but yeah. Well, for me, for me, it was very simple. Uh, I use a paper wallet, but then I lost the paper. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's an old school here. mistake. Yeah. Those are allowed. Those are allowed. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank, thanks. Thanks for playing along, guys. All right. Let's let's dive into it. So uh, this hackathon is thirty days, um, which means people are going to have an opportunity to build a lot longer. Whereas, like I mentioned, previous events were two days, two nights, and you're just kind of like going, going, going. This is 30 days where you're gonna have time to iterate, you're gonna have time to maybe hit some dead ends, restart. Um, it's a lot more time to explore and, and build something that's gonna last beyond um, just the event itself. So we have, uh, I'll just list off the sponsors we have so far and maybe that'll help to, because they will be offering some um, sponsor prizes and that'll help to frame um, the discussion we're going to have. So we have Ave Compound. We just added Uniswap, um, UMA, ENS, Chainlink, um, and P tokens. Uh, so those are the, um, the projects we have as sponsors, and they're going to be offering prizes. So we can we can talk about things that'll integrate them. Uh, we also have this spreadsheet that we've been adding to called um, <laughs> uterine level ideas for hack money. I'll drop that in the chat. Um, if, and, and if anybody doesn't know, uh, this is actually Liam Horn from ETH Global. He actually uh, made this the other day and it's referencing something from a few years ago, I believe, called Musk level ideas, Musk level engineering ideas. Um, so we're trying to make our own version of that future and level ideas for hack money. Uh, and it's, it's got a bunch of different things on there. Um, but yeah, now that, now that we have like the idea of who the sponsors are and a link to that spreadsheet, uh, I'll just open it up to Scott or Julian or Tina, if you want to just talk about um, things you've been thinking about. Oh. Yeah, I could like go through, I, I put a few ideas down there. I could go through them real quick. Is that what you want, Trent? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, um, so the, the first idea uh, that I put down there that I thought would be cool is um, there's sort of a growing, I think when Ethereum first started, everyone just made open source code and it had permissive licenses on it and they deployed it on blockchain, uh, on, on the chain and that was pretty good for other builders um, because you could look at the code. If there are parts of that code that you want to use, you could put them in your DAP. Um, but now we're seeing more projects uh, having proprietary code on chain uh, 
And I think if you are a miner with broad interest in the space, um, and then later a staking pool with broad interest in the space, um, when people do open source their code, it's better for the whole ecosystem. So if I have a long-term interest in the ecosystem succeeding, I might want incentives so that people do that. Um, and so if you had an NFT that let people put their uh, open source license on chain, you could apply um, a differential gas price to contracts with open source licenses or proprietary contracts. So if you want to keep your code proprietary, you can, uh, but some block creators might have a little higher standard to get your transactions in the block. Um, and I think it might, it might be cool because you could sell the NFTs to projects that want to add them. And then if you could get um, block creators to buy into the idea, uh, there might be an incentive and a little bit of a sustainable business um, around that. I think that'd be cool. I think a lot of people in the space uh, might be interested in that. Um, another idea is, is a, a, a debugger um, for package transactions. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to tell what part of a transaction failed. Um, and if there's a way to solve that problem, I think a lot of people would want to see that. Um, and they might pay a fee for it. I'm looking. And then, yeah, uh, I'll let Tina or Julian, if they have any ideas they want to go. First? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I said, you, you want to go first? I have too many no, shards. Go ahead. Right go now. Ahead. Oh, okay, so I go, I go. Um, I think for me, like um, having a system where you can um, uh, swap uh, or you can list all the different uh, physical assets. So for example, VLT, and you could basically have a different project based on physical asset that you can see all the different yields. That would be pretty cool. Um, so for example, like tokenized uh, carbon offset or real estate or uh, anything like that, a, a platform where you can list all the different uh, physical asset, then comparing all the comparing comparing uh, all the different, then it would be pretty cool. Um, well, let me just click on open the doc. If you want to go, uh, Tina. Yeah. So, um, so I've been uh, thinking about a a, a lot about uh, various type of DAOs. Um, I think right now there's enough money in DeFi at stake, and there's enough um, primitives uh, ready available. But what is uh, more or less missing is kind of like the playbook of how to organize participation, uh, both in terms of capital. And so um, one of the idea is, um, so basically using, um, uh, essentially create a, um, a DAO for um, transaction reorganizing, reorganization um, alliance. Um, so that um, because we need more and more money at stake. And uh, so, um, um, and it's kind of inevitable. So can we front run the run uh, the, the miners and actually um, protecting ourselves uh, in, a, in an alliance way in a, uh, through, um, economic uh, incentive design. So that's one, um, which is DeFi related because only DeFi has enough um, money at stake to justify such. Um, and the other idea that I had um, was kind of, so now that we saw projects like Compound um, uh, rolling out a uh, comp token, uh, and there are very nice properties associated with it. What if we can, so like one of my view is that we saw a lot of the primitives um, um, start to have some kind of a nationalistic or regional boundaries. Um, but why don't we leave the politics um, um, like to the DAOs who participate in such governance? 
um, to express your affiliation, like your, your views, rather than to have it on the protocol level, let the protocol to be neutral and let the DAOs to play out the politics. Like, um, like different um, kind of viewpoint in either governance, like for, some, for, for example, certain um, views I meant um, either like from uh, certain decisions to be more decentralized or less decentralized, like things like that, but to organize and express views through various DAOs um, and to have the DAOs participate in governance. Um, that's another um, thing that I've been um, kind of thinking about. Um, and, and lastly, um, I guess it has a little bit less to do with, um, uh, with DeFi, but more um, to do with using um, certain um, like uh, gamified incentive designs to better organize um, uh, product development such as um, an elongated um, kind of always ongoing hackathon style product development. Uh, I'm trying to design and apply this to my own project uh, that was essentially ex an extension from my uh, ETH Global project. So like uh, what I called um, essentially a, an, a continuous organization um, that is um, basically um, Set uh, like set by project milestone, but then essentially we automate um, like a portable bond, uh, sorry, portable equity type of uh, incentive design for each project milestone. So like V one, um, you know, we have this group of hackers joining force together to get to this goal, and uh, V two we reorg into and people have more optionality to reshuffle the formation. But, um, and, and, and so on. So there's a multi-round game. However, in each round is basically can write like a, like instead of a call option type, which is the typical like, you know, corporation stock option uh, type of, um, uh, you choose to essentially exercise later, but then like it's instead you, you upfront in opting into this like 36 hour or a hackathon mode or like one month hackathon phase. Uh, by opting in, um, saying that yes, I accept to take this this token that is assigned to me if I and this project complete meet the milestone. But uh, I can also opt to exit through um, exit to catch like to cash like a cop out option. Um, so uh, within a limited period of time, so that leaves flexibility for new more interested people to join at every single product phase. And this is self like iterative self uh, selective process. So those are the things that I've been uh, mostly thinking about. Yeah. Awesome. Those are those are some pretty, pretty big ideas. So for the DAO idea, are you specifically pulling that from uh, compounds governance? Or is this a generalizable, like it can be applied to any DeFi protocol? Uh, I think there, uh, uh, like, so, so first of all, I have to attribute part of this idea to uh, Robert from Compound because he was one of the, uh, I think, uh, both the Compound design and he mentioned um, it, it down the road, it would be kind of cool. And that kind of went along with my line of thinking in terms of DAO's participation in what DAO's means for DeFi. I do believe that DAO's will actually be, we see, we will see very meaningful innovation on DAOs. Like last year, we see a lot of concept, but there's nothing to be governed or not enough to be governed. And there's not enough of infrastructure available. And so that this year we're going to see more playbooks. So I do think that um, what th that idea I mentioned specifically has a requirement when it comes to um, the, uh, the, the token design and compound mm -hmm. token uh, uh, supports that. But I do think that it's definitely generalizable. Um, Awesome. Julian, did you have anything? Um... Oh, you're still muted. I think once you mute, you can't unmute. Cool. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, if people could actually build like a simple UI uh, uh, using Flash Loan to uh, swap 
uh, interest yield across uh, different platforms. So we could have, for example, Ave or Compound, or um, could also be using uh, TBTC, but basically it will be a system that can track uh, the best yield. Something like I earn, but more like uh, uh, in a simple mechanism where you just have a uh, flash loan uh, enable and you just click and then swap your um, uh, different interest yield. So for example, like DeFi Saver, the website that mm -hmm. allow you to close your, um, your loan uh, from Maker, uh, or maybe like uh, you could basically uh, build something a little bit more advanced where you can uh, swap uh, uh, interest rate across uh, all these different projects. And this will be not very really difficult uh, using uh, using a, a flash loan. And I you feel could, like I've, and you could I charge like a I've fee. seen um, other interest rate swaps recently. Like, um, like officially built, like people are being using them or just like as an idea? Because I've seen them and I use them, but um, I mean, I use my own uh, implementation, but I haven't seen any UI for people that have no uh, technical expertise and they can do it themselves. Okay, so you're, you're just thinking of like a, a very simple, uh, easy to easy to access UI to make yeah because for example for example like at the moment um, you can collateralize uh, ETH or Maker to print a die um, and then you can use those die to to earn interest on on Havi for example um, uh, but then if you want to close you if you lose uh, those die or if you invest those die in another mechanism then you need to reimburse the the loan. And it's not, there's no system where you can also cross. Uh, for example, if you have like um, compound and then uh, uh, other uh, DeFi yield um, uh, system, you cannot really move them, move those different assets across those different platforms right now. But maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't, used, I haven't seen them yet. Scott, Tina, any, any thoughts on that? Or have you seen anything like this implemented? Mm -hmm. because then you could you could actually and then people could actually provide uh, if it's a defi if it's a if it's a flash loan then obviously we'll be using uh, like for example ave or, or other uh, flash loan built but then you could also have a pool where people provide liquidity for people that want to swap their their interest um, and then you could charge a fee on that liquidity so it would be like a kind of like a pool of liquidity for people to earn a yield for people that want to swap or or close their, their loan. We built. Oh, cool. Yeah, but Robin. this one, this, this yeah, this one is probably for compound. But I'm thinking is like make it more generic, where you can just uh, have it uh, built for all the different uh, uh, yield uh, platforms. Robin, are you able to talk now? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? No. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, we build a, a website called DFLES, and we use uh, Harvey Flash Loan to, um, you don't need to uh, repay your loan first. You can just uh, swap your collateral from maybe DAI to Ether, and you don't need to uh, prepare a uh, upfront capital. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. But it's only, but I mean, it's it's just for for compound, right? Yeah. Cool. Well, I've definitely seen uh, quite a few um, interest rate um, swap projects that. Um, because I think ever since uh, ETH Berlin last year, um, interest rate swap like has been like a hot topic, and everyone's thinking is quite different. And uh, of course, the integration part is kind of um, no one has really explored it. So I think that that would be an interesting idea to um, to to actually uh, put together. Um, but definitely recent IRS projects like um, there's um, a swap net that's coming up. Um, not sure how um, their their light paper is out, um, 
and uh, you guys can check it out. It actually right now it implemented its light version because it uh, has an AMM to uh, price its pools. Um, and um, similarly, um, I think that 88 miles per hour is an, um, I haven't really played around with it much, but it's uh, had some uh, interesting um, uh, structure when it comes to uh, the interest, the, the fixed rate interest front. Okay. Um, can I just get a, give me a wave. Uh, anybody who's on the call who is applied to hack money and they're planning on building something, just, just wave at me. I'm just curious. All right, so that's like maybe, maybe half, maybe more than half, which is really awesome to see. So uh, as the title of this event would suggest, this is a hack money brainstorm. So I'm gonna open it up to anybody who would like to ask for feedback on their idea. Um, again, ask for feedback. We, I don't want you to just kind of go for 10 minutes talking about your concept. Um, and then maybe Scott, Julian, or Tina can give a little bit of uh, feedback or talk about what they think about that idea. Um, so I'm going to, uh, if you want to speak or talk about your idea, just raise your hand um, and then I can unmute you. Start with Adrian, go ahead. Hey, hello everyone. So just very quickly, my idea was called non-fungible wallet. And the base idea is to uh, join the NFT world and the smart contract wallet world by allowing you to generate a wallet that will act as an NFT. That way you can transfer it. So you can use it to put many things into it like ERC20s, ERC721, create a bundle of assets and then use it, use the NFT property to move this bundle and maybe use it for collateral through a mechanism like Rocket. Um. Yeah, Hadrian. Um, I think I think that's pretty cool. I I think um, I, I I guess then you'd be able to tokenize the wallet on top of that. Yeah, so the so wallet would be a token. Yeah, um, I might say two things. First, I think that's really cool for kind of getting a port a, like a port transferable portfolio of stuff. Um, like that might be a fun thing to put my crypto punks in. Um, the other thing I might suggest is uh, if it could use both NFTs and like regular ERC twenties, um, kind of like just have both of them in there. That might be pretty cool. Um, because I think like tokenizing like an arbitrary basket of ERC twenties, um, might also be a nice a nice thing to have that maybe uh isn't quite as usable okay. there's that so, yeah so the wallet would be an address so it could own basically anything your wallet could even take part of a protocol yeah no i i, I think it's an interesting idea awesome that's interesting you can actually you could actually uh, integrate this with uh Nozis wallet Anybody else have any ideas they want to uh, present? Nick, take it away. Hi, yes, hi guys. Uh, I'm thinking about um, uh, right now. You have like projects like Crypto Voxels and Decentralized, which, which sell decentralized real estate. But if you want to invest in those, you need to buy an entire property. And I'm thinking about uh, tokenizing the ownership of a property. And when you do so, you can set an expiration at when it will settle through auction. So basically, we tokenize a share in a P, in an NFT, which will get auctioned uh, at a set date. So that way, you split it up in, in pieces, and then after a while, it gets liquidated. So you can will get like X amount of ETH depending on the result of the auction. Kind of like how like with like wrapped crypto kitties, there's not really a good way to like break up the basket. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, but in Red CryptoKitties, so you can put in any kitty and it will mint the same token, but here it will like tokenize a share in the future proceeds of the auction. That's the idea. Yeah. That's cool. Then, yeah, then as an end goal, I would like to have like a, like a, maybe a balancer pool with, all, with a bunch of them in there. So you can like speculate on a piece of the center land, piece of crypto voxels, a kitty in there. So. And maybe like, maybe if all the, like, um, so if it's like going to go to auction at a certain date, uh, but then the people that like own the security, like own the not securities, uh, own the pieces of the pie or whatever, right? Own the pieces of the, the, the basket. Uh, if they can hit snooze, maybe if they don't want to sell right now. Oh yeah, so it becomes like a DAO type thing. If the majority of the owners decides to not liquidate for a while or something like that. Yeah, like where the default case, the default case is you end up in auction. But then if yeah. it's like, hey, we still think this is like a good speculative value to hold it, then we all mm -hmm. want to just like keep it going rather than have to like, um, with the, um, oh, I am blanking on their name. What was the tokenizing gold, the OG tokenizing gold DAO that just liquidated? Digix? It? What? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, Digix. Like a Digix problem where it's like, it defaults to lasting forever. And then you like have this huge coordination problem to make it not last forever. Mm -hmm. um, sort of the opposite where it's like the coordination problem if we all still want to be in it. Uh, that mm -hmm. would, that's pretty nice. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, yeah thanks. But, all right, Paul, now I got to find you and unmute you. Hey, ahead, testing, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, uh, so we're working on a simple way to spin up a multi-sig or a DAO, but for normies. So kind of in the same idea space as like Fantastic 12 or Signal DAO, but less chatbot forward of an interface and mm -hmm. kind of like DAO house, but we wouldn't be using the word DAO. It's more like the Venmo or like Chase banking type audience, but uh, like a casual group bank account. Yeah, like for PTAs and stuff. Yeah. Did you say PTAs, like Parent Teacher Association? Yeah, there's like a large transparency problem. And then there's also a large bookkeeping problem that like none of the parents really want to deal with. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I've always loved DAOs for that. Yeah, and totally. Time that's finally gets built. Like as long as people aren't scared of it, I think it would like, I mean, I don't know, like how much money did you collect? Like who's in charge of the bank account? Like all these things right now are just like yuck for like these like small, like a cancer walk, like a community, yeah. like a cancer walk, like, you know, it's nasty. It's like a, a big coordination cost. That's awesome, yeah. I'm actually curious. Um, I, I really like this idea. Um, I wonder what um, what is the current challenge that you're like the biggest roadblock you're solving right now in making this happen? Uh, I suppose the proof is in the pudding that normies aren't using DAOs. So <laughs> I guess just like a different onboarding flow that sets them up with their own wallet and app rather than like trying to get them on MetaMask, better fiat on ramp support, things like that. Uh, more abstraction in short. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I really like, um, I really like Dharma's uh, flow for onboarding for normies. Yeah. If you've gone through that, yeah, maybe. Cool, thanks. All right, looks like we've got Harsh. I'm gonna unmute you and you can uh, tell us about your idea. Go ahead. Thanks, Frank. Uh, hey, everyone. So uh, my idea is uh, uh, more for a DeFi support tool. So I was thinking of building a push notification service of sort for the entire uh, Ethereum. Uh, so it will basically be uh, divided into app owners, uh, which can send messages to uh, all the users or all the uh, wallets which have subscribed to their groups. And uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, once they send the messages, then uh, the Web3 providers uh, can pick it up and display to them. Or, you know, uh, they can uh, use the app or the website to come and you know, check out their message. 
that's sort of a basic idea which i'm working on right now but would like to know all uh, all of you guys what do you guys think about that um i i love this idea of i have a bunch of docs about how i would build it i not ever had time to build it um it's something people need like you heard i don't know if you heard at the very beginning but like not having ever built this idea i would have actually since then needed it so not to have lost my own money um so like yeah i don't know if if you do like kids serious about it like definitely ping me um i think it's something people need yeah yeah awesome awesome yeah come i'm uh, right in the middle of the architecture phase hopefully i'm right about it so yeah fingers crossed all right cool yeah Anybody else interested in uh, sharing? It doesn't have to be like fully worked out. You can just talk about um, some initial ideas. Um, all right, Cyril. Yeah. Mm, hi. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we would like uh, to build a market for oil that simulates the futures of the the financial futures of mainstream market. And we want to use uh, UMA, priceless synthetic token. And, and I wanted to ask if it is possible for the, because UMA is like a, a die for the dollar. It's the same, but it has an expiration. So something is put in the vault and uh, no, ether is put in the vault and tokens are created for a face value that is uh, like 100% in relation to 120% that is the collateral that has been put in the vault uh, of the... And we, I wanted to ask if there, if there is any product that uh, could help the sponsor of this token. Like for example, I have only 30 uh, ether and I want to issue a DAI for um 60 uh for 60 times uh, the price of ether so the double of what i have if there is a, a product that will lend me the the money like for example 60 ether so that i have 19 total 150 percent of the face value and to put this in collateral and if it falls under um well, 10% or 15%, it will liquidate the loan, give back like instead of 60, 61 ether to the lender, 13% uh, to the liquidator and the remaining to me that I, I did the operation. Um. I didn't really understand the, the project. Are you trying to build something on the insurance market with OPIN? Uh, no, uh, I am trying to simulate the futures, uh, specifically the oil futures. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a great future right now, but... Um... <laughs> no. <laughs> it is a great future. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, um, that was a, uh, I, I thought about doing this like on UMA. I think they're launching or something today. Um, yeah, you may check that out um, when UMA comes live. Um, yeah, I think that would be a really funny thing because I just saw FTX roll out um, oil, um, uh, its oil future. And the settlement price is going to be $100 above the spot price. So to keep it positive. So <laughs> I thought um funny thing that um very tiny yeah, if, if you want to build that i mean I'm, I'm also interested uh i was buying physical uh barrel of oil so there's probably something we can do um but Good. yeah i think it's a, sorry where'd you put them yeah you, you're yeah, taking physical a, delivery yeah, yeah it's uh it's in the countryside of france <laughs> Wow! It's like uh, it's not it's not barrel like it's um it's in a massive cube you know it's a massive uh, three thousand liters and uh, it doesn't so come in I, like small milk jugs. Underground caves on your property or like? 
it, it comes it comes with a truck, but uh, oh, I might have <laughs> a cover, uh, yeah, I might have a capacity of ten thousand liters right now, and uh, it's probably something that with Uma we could actually tokenize it, and uh, yeah, that's great. I love it. <laughs> that would be amazing to tokenize Julian's delivered oil <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if you think about, I mean, it's. Um, yeah, no, Cyril, if, you, if you're building this, I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested. I think it's a great, uh, I think there's something to do, yeah. Can I send you a direct message in Discord and we'll speak about it? Yeah, just tweet me, um, message me on Twitter or something. But uh, I think it's a cool, uh, it's a massive potential right now uh, 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 also. Awesome. Perfect. Also, in general, if anybody wants to like DM me about the idea or whatever, just Find me in the F Global Discord and ping me. Yeah, same for me. All right. One of the things we've started doing is quick attention checks. So what I'm going to ask everybody to do, if you have your if you have your video on, pick up something smallish on your desk and just hold it up to the camera. It's, that's not your phone. And as per usual, my cat <laughs> is making an appearance. <laughs> we have a mask, a hat. I don't know what Mick is holding. A marker. Oh wait. But, uh, I should I should start. Ooh, a, a crypto kaiju. Look at that. We should start keeping track of the strangest objects that people have. A head scratcher. <laughs> wait. These are great. Clearly, you can tell who is it home and who's at <laughs> right because i'm stuck in san francisco like this is <laughs> i'm unfortunately stuck in a place where i can't move or travel to any place in the world <laughs> because of the travel uh covid 19 travel events so yeah. there eternally well someone someone is sitting on the boat i can see like sailing or something like fishing <laughs> brandon you sure that's not just their their background? Oh yeah, that's just a background. <laughs> cool. All right, we've got about ten minutes left, so let's try and get in a few more um, proposals. Looks like Daniel was oh, next. So hey guys, no one, uh, there's no okay, cool. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I saw in the lead in the like buterin level ideas to do a medium clone on IPFS. I thought that was a cool idea. Uh, but I wanted to give it a cool spin using Ave. So I'm thinking um, when instead of like with Medium where you have to pay money every month to subscribe, I was thinking maybe we could take some die and stake it, maybe like 50 something amount of die. And the interest uh, from each reader would then get paid to go to the creators of the content. Um, so just kind of like a, a lossless way of subscribing to good content. So that's kind of my idea. Yeah, this is a great idea. And it could be, it's kind of, kind of uh, simple to build. Yeah, I don't know a lot about smart. I mean, I know about smart contracts, not really how to write. I'm learning Solidity, but uh, I think it shouldn't be too difficult to make. Um, the only kind of question is how to incentivize like good content. Um, but uh, I'm kind of like working, thinking, thinking through that right now. Um, probably at the beginning, we'll just invite like writers that are good writers to come on and, and you know, hopefully they'll make good content. But uh, there, I'm sure there could be made more complex later with like better incentives. Uh, like Steema, I don't know, does Steema, they don't, like people, Steema and Scent, you can like pay money to your favorite author, but I'm thinking it'd be kind of like a UBI for the authors, like everyone would everyone who's an author would uh, receive money based on like how many articles they've written. Uh, so it'd basically be like a UBI that'd be paid out to everyone, all the writers at the same time, like every day or every week or whatever, uh, based on how much die has been staked. Mm -hmm. But how do you, um, I mean, having good or bad content, it's kind of like uh, subjective. How do you, yeah, like, how would you rate? I would definitely like spam, obviously, like just posting like every day or posting like a lot with no real content um, 
that would be just classified as spam and probably just be like deleted. I think yeah, but it'd be yeah, that's a good like, point. I think I think there's like there's um uh, I've seen this guy building um a project to uh, for emails. Uh, so you basically uh, send your personal token. For example, you send your personal token to Vitalik for, and then Vitalik is requested to um, to read the email, but he's actually receiving his own tokens. But if he doesn't actually open the email and read it, then you basically lose value of his own token. Um, so maybe there's a concept that you can apply in your uh, medium uh, idea, where you um, maybe it can be a, a mix between personal tokens and uh, and, and, a, and a TCR mechanism, a token carried through the registry. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I think yeah. the email spamming uh, me uh, mechanism was really good. Yeah, and someone says it's like, have the it's like if I send. Die. Yeah, it's like I am going to have the writer stake die, as well. But then, if you stake die against, so what is the punishment? Like, what do you do if you stake the die? You lose the die if the content is not good, or? Yeah, no, yeah, uh, that would definitely be like a, a good mechanism uh, to have them like every article, they could stake some die or something. And then if it is classified as spam, then it would, they would lose their die or something. But uh, yeah. Cool. Let's, let's, try and, let's try and get in a, a few other ones. Andrew, yeah. thanks. Want to go ahead? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent, yeah. So first of all, Daniel, I think that's a great idea. Um, the thing I want to discuss was also relating to no loss, very much inspired by Pull Together. Um, um, There's actually an idea from uh, Stanley of Aid was talking about it in the thread. Basically, it's no loss betting. So uh, instead of the interest on people's die being randomly allocated, it is allocated to people based on a position they take. For a very quick example, imagine it's the US presidential election. You can either stake die on Trump or Biden and all of the interests are going to a pool. You can't withdraw your stake for the duration of whatever the event is. And then at the end, it uses an oracle to find out who won the election. And then all of the interest is shared among everyone that staked the correct outcome. So basically it's no loss betting, which is essentially it's a form of, it's a prediction market, or it's a way of gamifying savings, depending on how you look at it, depending on how it's marketed, I guess. But that's the idea. It's a, it's a great idea. I love it. See, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pull together for prediction market. Yeah, exactly. It's basically a, a fun way of saving money, which is essentially what pull together is. It's just a slight. Yeah, but the, the, I think, I think economically speaking, I think there's a problem um, because then you will have, um, uh, Basically, you can bet on anything because you know that you're not going to lose any money. So then, the, the I'm not sure if people will because you can participate in all the the different uh, bids. Uh, you can participate in everything, but your payout is proportional to how much you stake on an outcome. So if you choose the wrong one, you'll get less money. You'll win less money. But is in a bidding system, uh, um, you want to bid because you know you can lose money. But in a system where you can not lose money, can you actually bid? You know, it's my, I'm not sure. Well, you, you, are, you are tying up your die for the duration of the competition. So you do have an opportunity cost. It's yeah. just like pulled together. I think you can make so, yeah, it if like I, mutual. Say that again? Like, 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 like horse betting. It's like the odds are like whatever money people put in rather than oh, something I like a prediction market where it's like there's a bid and an offer. Like, oh yeah, the you are yeah. I can yeah, absolutely. And the, the the odds would be implied based on how much people are staking on each of the outcomes. Like and so it would basically be chosen by the market. Um and it would be yeah, there wouldn't need be any kind of bid and offer. The UX would actually be quite simple. It would simply be choose a candidate of the US election to use that as an example. It's just an example. And then it's simply I want to stake a hundred die that Biden's gonna win. Uh currently the thing is saying there's a 40% chance of him winning. And that's it. And then at the end of the competition, you get your money back and maybe you get some of the interest as well. I think the UX is easier than existing prediction markets as well. Yeah, you could, you could, uh, you could take pull together a contract and then uh, add it to Gnosis or Augur uh, prediction market. I mean, yeah, I'm really quite familiar with the oracles. Or you could make it a loss full 
and just make it a pair mutual betting market where you just, you know, uh, avoid the, the one risk of the interest rates, right? DeFi interest rates could be really high and then it's awesome, or they could be like very low. And then it's harder to get the like excitement going. Um, but I mean, I think a pair of mutual like betting framework might be something useful too. That's a good idea. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Keep getting in touch if anyone wants to help me build this. Tito, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So basically my idea is more related to trading and DeFi again. So it's not about no lose water is or whatever. And it is about market making. Uh, basically, most of the market making models right now are uh, related to uh, put liquidity. And this is the, the way that we are doing it with smart contracts. But if we have a liquidity which is provided on demand with some market making bot or whatever, you can have like two streams of, of, uh, of interest. You can, for example, provide some die on demand. And where there is demand for swapping, for example, ETH for DAI or BTC for DAI, you can provide it. But in the, during the other time when it's not uh, in usage, you can stake it in compound. And all these things could be automized and you can stake for most of the time. But when there is an order which you can match, you can just provide the liquidity and take like 0.5%, uh, let's say, or, which is the spread from the market price. And it is much more profitable than just uh, staking in some lending protocol or whatever. So you can combine them with this more different approach of liquidity provision. You can at the same time provide liquidity on demand. And when it's not used, you can uh, lend in Aave or Compound or something like that. That's the idea that I have. Do you think that it could work or? Yeah, so you want to build a pool that uh, shakes the best yield uh, for making market maker. Yeah, it is like a software which everyone just downloads, start on his computer. And when there is a, a good trade which you are matching, then you provide the liquidity. And if there is not, you're just lending in compound or other. Yeah, so the, because I've I, I actually been working on that, I mean, in arbitrage, arbitrage DAO. Um, the only the, the problem the problem is the, the the first problem is the one that if you reach uh, 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 so you you need like a limit size of the pool because otherwise the profit are too low to be shared across all the people that are putting a, a, a liquidity so it can only be uh, for except if you if you're good at chasing all the profit all the spread on the market but otherwise it's really difficult to get a better uh, yield than compound or whatsoever, because you need, um, it, when the liquidity is low, then it's, it's, it's great. But then when it's too high, there's no incentive for people to keep their liquidity inside the pool. That's the first thing. And then secondly, when you have access to flash loan and if flash loan, uh, they don't charge a fee, then it's really difficult to compete against them. But what, how is that related to the flash loan? I mean, it is just for swapping like Uniswap or let's say our protocol in particular is from, for cross-chain swaps. So it is for BTC DAI or whatever, but I mean, flash loans, how are they related to that? Um, okay, no, so you don't want like just, it's only for market maker. You don't want like arbitrage or whatsoever. Yeah, it is only for market makers, which can provide liquidity or just land at the same time. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. We are right at 11. Um, unfortunately, I wish we could keep talking about this. It, Scott, Julie, and Tina, do you guys have a few more minutes or do you have to run? What does it look like on your end? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It's sunny on my side. I'm good. All right. Well, it's, it's snowing where I am, so stop bragging. <laughs> oh, wow. Where are you? I am in the East Coast. It's not East Coast US. It's not oh, wow. not pleasant. Um, so yeah, we can we, let's go for a few more minutes. Um, try and get in a few more ideas. Um, if anybody has to leave so really no quick, one, really no quick before the... anybody goes, um, I just want to remind you: if you have applied to Hack Money, um, 
you have to stake. Staking is the next step. Uh, it's something that's going to be returned to you at the end of the hackathon, um, but you should have received an email if you've been accepted. So check your spam, check your emails, make sure that you're staking and um, you're logging in to set up your team, um, read the logistics packet. Uh, we've got a bunch of information that we've sent out. So we want to start getting people um, into the, the proper mode. Um, and check on Discord if you haven't joined. If your name is not read, that means you're not fully, you're not um, properly registered. Uh, if you're red, that's good. That means you're in the hack money section. So make sure to stake, start checking out the sponsor prizes um, and check your spam email in case you haven't heard any of this before. All right, let's try and get in a few more. Um, Joran, looks like you're next. You're next. Oh, hey. Um, cool. Uh, the, the, the stream kind of uh, went janky there. You mentioned something about my name not being read on the Discord. Uh, just just DM me later and I'll, we can work on that. But go ahead. Tell us about your idea. Cool. Um, so yeah, so to jump on the pool together kind of bandwagon, uh, my idea is kind of like a Patreon kind of thing for content creators. Um, and it's kind of come out of the the whole um, problems with YouTube kicking uh, crypto YouTubers off and stuff like that. And um, we want to kind of um, use this discovery platform in order to bring people into the crypto space, but they're keep kicking us off. So we need to find our own platforms um, and we need to find a way to monetize those platforms. So the idea is if crypto YouTubers or anybody really um, wants to create their own platform, they um, can um, add on this, uh, this piece that allows people to uh, donate DAI. And instead of it going directly to them, it locks it up in a pool together kind of way where the interest is what the content creator is going to be paid out. Um, and this will also feed into the um, discovery kind of thing where um, we can use the uh, the metrics of how much die is actually actually locked up for a particular um, content producer to kind of weight how much this person's content is valuable. And then we can have that kind of be um, the discovery platform. Um, so it's a, it's a play on pool together where the outcome doesn't go to one of the pool participants. The outcome goes to a content creator. And this could also be like for charities or for any other kind of crowdfunding platform. But the uh, the major, uh, the first kind of um, uh, avenue was the the YouTube kind of dilemma, content creator kind of dilemma there. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see kind of the motivations to just like transfer your money to stake with someone and you're going to get it back definitely appeal to like someone that may be just giving your money to like someone you're a fan of like it seems like like some people might want to give their money away but other people might feel more comfortable just like giving the interest away so maybe it like broadens the appeal of like who wants to par financially participate with their favorite influencers um and that that part's pretty that that part's pretty interesting also yeah it also is a seems like a lends itself very well to being like a a very hard a harder to manipulate like kind of like not the self show but so like out, out total value locked is like you know like how much skin in the game are people really putting in it's also sort of like this skin in the game issue and maybe even like a little better than if you made a metric about like how much money is someone collecting on the platform because they could just give themselves like they could just like create wash donations like essentially give themselves money and rise up the leaderboard but if they actually have to stake money that's like a harder ask yeah exactly yeah but yeah that that's pretty interesting yeah it seems like i no idea whether it, i mean it seems like legitimately new enough it's hard to like guess what the real appeal is but you know you'll never know until you you know ask people if they want to do it Yeah. Awesome. Tom, let me unmute you. And then you're, you're up. 
Also, one, one thing I realized I didn't explain is uh, how to actually raise your hand in Zoom. Um, <laughs> I only noticed it after Tom kept going like this, um, but there's a, little, there's a little button in the interface where it puts up a little blue hand next to your name, but uh, I'll make sure to explain that for next time. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, so can, can you hear me okay? Is that, yes. Is that right? Cool. Um, so what I, my idea was sort of thinking around, um, okay, so recently with like Black Thursday, we've had issues with the DIPEG. And uh, at the time where most people want it to deleverage, de there just isn't enough liquidity, but there's a lot of liquidity on like centralized stable coins. So that sort of led to USDC being integrated as a um, collateral type, which was controversial, to say at least. Um, what I've been sort of thinking about is whether we can kind of make that optional. No pun intended, pun coming later. Um, what essentially we can incentivize users who are okay with centralized stable coins to basically pull their um, die that they're holding into and kind of give out options to allow people to buy that underlying die in return for a small premium in a centralized stable coin um, to kind of try and limit this kind of uh, how far above the peg it can actually rise without actually having any centralized civil coins backing DAI itself. Um, so the way it would work is uh, if you hold DAI and you're going to put it into the DSR, but you're equally happy to just receive some centralized civil coin, you can put it into contracts, it kind of sits in the DSR and then um, should you can kind of create options to allow people to buy out this die at possibly like 1.05 USDC to one die. Um, so it kind of gives a better revenue stream for die holders that are okay with centralized stable coins, but if you um, are kind of a decentralization maximalist, you can kind of ignore it completely and you don't have to worry about it and you're safe with uh, as you were before. You can, you can benefit from some disability without having to worry about any kind of risks of uh, centralized coins being um, frozen. And then kind of at that point, I kind of saw the 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 Butera novel idea from kind of Stani. Um, at, at that point, when we're talking about kind of options for um, different stable points, I think it might be interesting to get into just making for non USC stable coins having. Um, wrapping up kind of options into the case where you can say say you have a, a euro stable coin you can buy DAI but like to put into compound or whatever but at the same time that you buy it it kind of you automatically get an option to allow you to redeem like some fraction of your original uh, euro value to try and so allow people to uh, integrate well uh, to participate in DeFi, which is normally US dollar uh, denominated, while still minimizing their risk in their own currency. Tom, was this was this two separate ideas? This, this uh, I, it's pretty linked. Like the like. Most of the interfaces can be 100% the same. So it's it's just a choice of we can have, the, there is a benefit to 
like having these options between US dollar like stable coins. And then there's benefits of branching out into different currencies as well. Okay. Seems like a pretty big idea. Yeah. I, I feel that yeah, but it kind of breaks down quite nicely because I feel like the, the DAI options, if, if we discount the, the other currencies thing, that's still a self-contained project and it still brings value, I think. Any thoughts from uh, our... I, I think um, the first half of the idea um, sounds a bit like something that could maybe be built on like something like Balancer. Um, okay. if you put all your set the centralized stable coins, um, into like a, a balancer pool, and then you tokenize that. And then that kind of like these hypothecated decentralized stable coin was then used as a, um, collateral for maker instead of you know, PC. Um, it would kind of solve that first problem where like, you don't actually have the stable coin directly in maker. Um, Sorry, I'm not that kind of, like, 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 think about if we have a Uniswap V2 pool, where I have like uh, USDC and like uh, Gemini dollars or whatever, yeah. GUSD, right? And then I have pool tokens, which probably, as long as both of those are worth a dollar, the pool tokens also have a stable dollar. And then with those pool tokens, then be kind of just a two stable coin version of the first half of the idea, or did I misunderstand? Like the the way I'm sort I'm kind of coming at it is I don't really want to have this pool open to kind of people to buy out your your coins at any time. It would only be in in situations where die is deviating from this peg. So like situations like that, it's the the die providers would have to have a fair amount of their deposits also in a centralized stablecoin. It feels if you're saying. From, uh, to, I, I haven't um, looked at balancer, but if 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 I'm in Uniswap, I would if I'm providing liquidity to this, I have to also have exposure like exposure to uh, the centralized stablecoin, which I may not want to have all the time. I, I may not understand it. Yeah, I think okay. it, Tom, if you haven't like written this out yet, I, I'm I think I'm getting what you're you're trying to describe, but definitely would help if it's been written out. So if you want to throw that into the Hack Ideas channel, I think that would okay. be super helpful for everybody. Sure. Awesome. Um, let's. Uh, there are three left, three hands raised. So we're, let's try and. Um, Let's do those three and then I think we can wrap up. All right. So go ahead. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm working on a, on a, an application that will uh, help any valuable asset owner to tokenize their asset and use it as um, a, coll a collateral for, for a loan. So that's on my, that's, that's the idea for now, so. Um, can you, can you repeat, you, you're tokenizing physical assets? Yeah, physical, uh, real, real world assets. So we are different of uh, rocket, and, rocket NFT. I see someone to write rocket NFT, so. Yeah. But how, I mean, do you, but how do you legally uh, tokenize? Uh, yeah, assets. yeah. Locally, we um we will work with like with uh, institution, like with uh, some institution, so um, or some business. If it's if it's like if it's uh, for a car, or um, or, or real estate. So we'll be working with a business or with a institution that will have to uh, to validate our 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 okay. solution. And uh, yes. I think I think this kind of project is is um, the the the, uh, the 
the issue is just the legal issue is is, is legal um, legal implementation because technically speaking, it's pretty easy to to have an NFT that represents a physical asset. But legally, um, I think it's it's where you've got most of the the work to be done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you can solve the problem that like the it's a really valuable like it's a really valuable problem to solve um but yeah i think i sort of uh agree with julian it's the the tech problem is is one part is not super easy yeah but the legal part is probably 10x harder than the tech part at least yeah i, I don't i don't think this is like for hackathon uh, it's probably a little bit too yeah yeah, I feel like um, like for hackathons, I, I really like those crypto native ideas, like because um, it's feasible and um, and also kind of um, just uh, uh, kind of putting two or three different mechanisms or like protocols together. Those are kind of uh, sometimes can create very interesting um, combinations like uh, um, that actually can be of like of use. Uh, so I think instead of like a really big real world idea, which re re requires a lot of like le like legal recourse enforcement and hard to scale, and has I think that's something that was pro is probably more suitable for a hackathon. Uh, I, I would consider. Um, but also, I, I feel like um, I think ETH Global has like gone to the come to the point that I feel like all like real world ideas have been tried and tested and throw it out there for the past two years that um, that we're at this point where it's it's a bit more kind of uh, niche. Like a lot of times we seem to take on very niche ideas that doesn't sound revolutionary, but it's like an optimization. But I think those are the projects that will provide value to um, the rest of the uh, folks in this industry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Ben. Mm -hmm. uh, ben, it seems like you're you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. It might be a permissions issue or your headphones or something. What about now? There you go. Hi. So. Um... My idea was, um, I had it, it's a bit raw, so I, had, I came up with it just, uh, just before this. So um, it's, you, right now we have uh, collateralized loans, but we don't have uh, uncollateralized loans, um, which in the real world are based on like a credit score, generally. Um, so I think I've seen a few projects working on this. Um, so it might, it might, they might, this idea might already be, be being worked on by somebody else. I don't know, so maybe someone could tell me that, but um, my idea is to you, you use an F NFT to represent a person. And then basically, um, so that could represent a loan, for instance. And then on a secondary market, that NFT would then trade. And then that would create the rate for your loan, basically. So like even, even kind of prior to actually applying for a loan, there would be this NFT traded, um, which would be like other traders' willingness to then lend to you. Um, and basically, so you might say, how, the, how is the credit score going to be formed? Well, it would be, it would be formed by just kind of like the, the real world rough consensus. Like I would say, oh, this is my NFT. Um, you know, I'd give the address, I'd publish it on Twitter, et cetera. And then uh, people would trade and I would like publish details about whatever I wanted, like, like my income, for instance, or my, or my job, my, or my, basically some indication of my ability to pay it back. And then, um, so yeah, that's basically the idea. So you, you put your income on Twitter to get the loan? Well, no, no, no. You, you, you could put whatever you could put in, in the public, whatever you like. So then how do you verify that is 
the authenticity Sorry? of how do you verify this information? Well, you you wouldn't ever you can verify it in any way you like. So, um, you know, one person, for instance, if they wanted to guarantee their loan, they could publish everything and have it notarized, put that all on online, you know, for everyone to see. They could even, you know, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, the, or, the U.S. had, I'm not sure where you're from, but the, the U.S. had a system like this before the financial crisis, like no doc loans. Um, or they're called liar loans. And essentially you could like go to the bank and get a loan on, on real estate uh, without really providing any proof of your ability to pay. And a lot of people uh, took out these loans and uh, they didn't like their repayment rates weren't that great. Um, it turns out. Uh, so like I, I, there's like a, there's a population of people that if you can make up stuff to get a loan, they will. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, criminals or, you know, people that like do that as their job, kind of. Isn't, isn't yeah. what uh, Union, Union Protocol was trying to build on collateralized or unsecured loan? Yeah, that's right. I, I, I saw them and um, they, they're trying to build that, but I didn't see it based on individual NFTs that are traded. I think it's more like a DAO, uh, yeah, it's a credit it's, union. Credit union. Yeah, they, I think they use a, a DAO mechanism to then set the rates for the different loans and decision making. So this, this wouldn't be a DAO mechanism. This would be purely you have this NFT and then the, just the meaning of the project implies you know, that this NFT represents somebody. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the barrier that you have to solve, and I'm not saying you can't solve it, is that you have to disincentivize people coming to rip you off and taking out loans without any, any uh, plan to repay. Yeah, so the disincentive for that is the same as the regular credit score, is that you would then get no credit in the future from, well, at least, from this system, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, it's debatable as how it would affect your real world, whether people trust you in the real world, that's really debatable. But like, if this, if this system, you know, continued on, then you would no longer be able to get any credit, you know, from that such a system. And um, let's say, let's oh, say- exactly. you, The current system, you also get like annoying people calling your phone every hour of the day. And then if you do ever make enough money, uh, if you owe enough and you make enough money, like you'll get taken to court and potentially get your wages garnished. Um, so like that doesn't apply to a lot of people that owe money. Like if you don't pay your cable bill, you know, you're not going to get your wages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like there, there are some, and also if you lie about your things to like get credit, that can be fraud. And like, you could be like, you know, have like, other larger penalties. Yeah. So your point is that there's bigger incentives in the real world, and therefore is a problem translating these onto the, this project. Yeah, because it is like a civil resistance problem. Because like you know, I maybe I care about not getting credit in the future, but like this imaginary person I made up to try to get a loan from you, they definitely don't care about their future credit. Um, and so like how you do that. Is, is the problem or part of the problem at least i think um um i remember like there was another project called um zero collateral or something like that um then it's a cascade of of loans uh that are getting paid using the interest rate uh, the interest repayment of the previous loan there was something like that it's called zero zero collateral yeah, I, I think they're they're definitely focused on that kind of piece you hinted at, uh, Ben, in that uh, like really trying to get that score into like your social reputation amongst your friends is like an enforcement yeah. mechanism. Or, or you uh, could or you could talk you could tokenize something that is very precious to you. For example, you could tokenize your Twitter access. Let's say it's an NFT token. If you if you cannot be paid alone, then you lose your uh, Twitter access for a period of time that. Uh, 
uh, until you repay the loan that you can uh, you can retrieve the the access to that Twitter. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I like know. the idea of like pledging your phone number. And so if you don't pay back, you get a message to anyone that calls you just saying this number is not operational because uh, Jonathan has, hasn't paid back his loans or can't, can't manage to pay back his loans. <laughs> or, you, or you do yeah. something, something like they do in China, they, you cannot take the uh, public transportation anymore. And what, uh, you know. I think we should take away your truck of oil, Julian. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, I, I think, uh, I, I think uh, like, uh, I, I like the idea of, uh, once again, like not enforceable re uh, real world recourse, but to have something really at stake. That's why, like, I, I do think that uh, going a bit further, like, um, I think, I think the, uh, the floating, like the NFT tokenizing the credit part is easy. Um, but I do think the hard part is really to bootstrap um, a, uh, uh, the reputation system without an identity, on-chain identity. And uh, so like one of the, like, I think uh, if I, like, I would usually, I would prefer like in this case to, to go towards um, uh, like an optimized version of what Union was doing. So Union essentially having your friends stake for you with uh, skin in the game, with uh, crypto. Uh, whereas, um, however, like it's hard to get that many friends up front. So like uh, there are actually uh, entities like, in third world countries uh, or like in other places where they know the local people. And so they're kind of like the, the local rural bank who knows everyone or like the neighborhood, like community uh, leaders and who already are doing this kind of um, reputation staking and verification for people. So it's still kind of fully on chain like uh, incentivization, but it's more kind of, um, like an my uh, like a minor improvement on the existing like the the the, the DAO membership um, uh, staking like your friend staking, but kind of like more catered towards an entity like making it super easy for uh, to bootstrap the uh, the credit system upfront. So to have uh, make it easier for um, uh, for for people who already have um, capital and already have uh, like a reputation network, but not necessarily um, like have to have be like the uh, like 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 the credit score um, companies or that that's kind of like the approach that I like kind of purely based on um, economic incentives, but optimizing for like ac the actual situations. So it's kind of like an oligarchical credit issuance um, like market structure. Cool. All right. Um, I hate to cut anybody off, but. We're gonna just do one more person and then uh, I'd encourage anybody who wants to keep talking to jump into the Discord voice chat. Um, we've got a couple of channels there. I think the one in Hack Money is called Cafe. So again, I'll jump over there. Uh, if, if anybody else wants to, I'm, I'm happy to keep talking. Uh, Tina, really quick, one thing that you mentioned earlier was like you feel like um, all the ideas that can be done have been done. Uh, and so like people will try to find like the small niche ideas that will um, you know, haven't been touched on. And it, it just got me thinking that one of the things that we're trying to do with Hack Money is um, now that we have 30 days, it's like an infinite amount of time compared to like a weekend hackathon. So there's a lot more time to iterate and and find something that's a little more featureful. Um, and I think that's a really exciting opportunity for anybody who's participating to sort of Sorry. Just on that point, I wouldn't want anyone to get discouraged because things have been tried, but just because something was tried during 2017, the tooling, the total addressable market, uh, the reasons people were in the space were completely different. Mm -hmm. And like, there are just so many facts, like, you know, th there wasn't a community of DeFi enthusiasts in 2017. There was like a rabid community of like ICO hunters in 2017. Yeah. It weren't really trying to like join liquidity pools or interact with stuff. And so like if you never quite know what blockers caused some of these ideas, it seemed good not to work. But if you can like have another take on them with how much more how much I mean Ethereum's still immature, but it's way less immature. And with a lot of the things that have happened in the last three years if you can like remix them with the capabilities we have now, I, I think that 
you I like I've I've seen like like I mean just Aragon right in 2017 it was like yeah let's do this and basically for the first 12 months of Aragon there was nothing on Aragon and like now you're starting to see projects actually use it because the environment around Ethereum has changed um, and there's just more stuff you can do because the space is bigger uh, from like a from like a builder and user community group even though it's smaller from a market cap perspective, but that's not super important for building something that people will want to use. Yeah, that, that's a good way to frame it. Even if it's been tried before, there might be a new twist that you can put on an existing idea. And the cool thing is with all these past ETH global events, you can look at what people have already done, see what they did and maybe change their approach or uh, you know remix it. It's, it's, a, it's a good backlog to, or good archive to look through. All right, really quick, Jordy, why don't you uh, tell us your idea? You you are muted. It might be your oh. Okay. Go ahead. You can hear me now. Sorry. Yep. Good. Um, hi everyone. Uh, really quickly, uh, two ideas uh, following from comments from Tina. Um, one of them more crypto native and and super simple. I think within the the scope of the hackathon. Uh, you may have seen the emergence of option contracts in DeFi with the likes of Open or Hedgic. I think it would be pretty cool if you could implement a dynamic hedging position so that you saved ETH, for example, and these ETH were dynamically hedged by put contracts in a way that you could uh, basically implement the strategy hands off so that it was like a robot traded hedging position. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. That's the that's the simple idea and it's very crypto native and I think uh, somebody will end up doing it because uh, today if you want to hedge, it's quite complicated. You have to keep an eye on the pricing contracts and the pricing, you have to stay on top of it. I think this could be super easily uh, automated by a, by a kind of a trustless robot advisor. Um, in fact, I've been running some back tests on it, happy to circulate the results uh, with other people. And then th the other idea is, is a lot more ambitious and it falls on the, on the realm of real world. And really what we're trying to do is orchestrate two communities, okay? On the one hand, you have uh, potentially elderly people who are homeowners and are low on liquidity. So maybe I'm, I'm 70 years old <clears throat> and the pension in my country is getting smaller and smaller. And it turns out I'm actually <clears throat> a homeowner, okay? So the idea is that I transfer this home equity into a pool and then I get currency uh, in exchange without having to vacate my home, okay? Wh who's providing this liquidity? This is on the other side. And then on the other side, you have basically regular savers who also don't trust the pension scheme in their countries. And what they're doing is they're contributing liquidity today into a pool. And then in return, they get this special type of home equity that uh, as soon as the person uh, passes away on the other side, creates cash flows that return back to the liquidity provider. And so what you have is like a circular economy that's linking people that have liquidity in the present time and are looking for real estate equity. And, and on the other hand, people that do have real estate equity and need liquidity. And so what we're thinking of is uh, making a system emerge that um, orchestrates both markets. Any thoughts? Well, I like I like the first idea. I really like it. I think it makes a lot of sense, especially with what I'm working on. I think it's cool. I like it. Yeah, it seems like there were also some comments in the in the chat as well. Some people like that idea, so definitely put that uh, into the Hack Ideas channel if you haven't already. Sure. Awesome. Well, this has been really good. I appreciate everybody who showed up. Um, thank you again to our speakers slash brainstorm helpers, Scott, Julie, and Tina. You guys have been awesome. Um, 
I really appreciate you taking the time to listen and respond thoughtfully. Um, I'm sure it's going to really help the hackers as they start to like flesh out their ideas and get their teams together. Um, again, if you haven't staked for hack money, please do so. If you're having technical issues, reach out. Uh, we want to make sure everybody's ready to go. Uh, when the bell rings on Friday, there's not going to be an actual bell, but maybe we should have a bell. Um, yeah, so they kick off. Be sure to register for that. It's going to be awesome. It's um, uh, Linda G from Scalar Capital, Spencer Noon from Doggy Tail Crypto Capital, I think is the name, and Austin Griffith from the Ethereum Foundation. They're going to be talking about DeFi, just have a general discussion on it. Um, and it's, it's going to be really great. I'm looking forward to it. So again, thank you everybody for showing up. Stake if you haven't, register for the kickoff. And uh, yeah, let's keep the discussion going into um, the Discord if you haven't already. All right. Awesome. Have thanks, a good rest of the day. It, Trent. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you guys could all make it. All right, yeah, thanks Trent for doing it, it was awesome. Yeah. Have a good rest awesome. of the day. Bye. See you guys, bye-bye.